Well, good day. Glav here. Welcome back and thanks for checking back in. This video is a little ride to the north of Brisbane. It's a nice ride around the Sunshine Coast hinterlands. And whilst I'm doing it, I've made some comments about the Indian and its performance that um, you wouldn't necessarily get unless you're an Indian rider. It'll be interesting to people who are Indian riders and also potential new buyers. Um, this uh, video I'm putting together in Thailand, so this video will be the last Aussie one that I do for the next three months, and the next set of videos that you see will be coming out of Thailand. I'm currently sitting in hotel quarantine in Thailand, 10 days or 11 days worth, um, and this is only day two and I can't wait to get the hell out of it and get back on the road. Happy days! Sunday morning, 26 degrees, beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. I'm going to use this opportunity to just do a bit of a review on the Indians, done 13,000 kilometres in four months. Doing a Sunshine Coast hinterland ride today with all the boys, which is great because this will be my last Aussie ride uh, for about four months. Next video you get will probably be out of Thailand. Heading up there next week. So the Indian, 13,000 odd, still loving it. A couple of little issues with it, um, but they're going to fix under warranty. Biggest issue is they can't get parts at the moment. They're going to replace my back left hand pannier because it's leaking. Uh, I'm going to replace the whole box, which is good. Already picked up a couple of my mates heading up to Landsborough, pick up three more, so there's a full contingent of it riding today, which is just great. This is a Bruce Highway, pretty boring, but not a bad road, heading up to Landsborough, as I said. Should be a superb day. Beautiful scenery on this ride. There's been a lot of rain here, so it should be nice and green too. Happy friggin' days. I'm on Steve Irwin Way, I'll be passing Australia, famous Australia Zoo shortly. It's a beautiful country up through here. So, in terms of comments on the Indian, as I said, 13,000 Ks. This, these comments won't be in order of anything in particular, just making general comments about the bike. Um, the Cruise Tech tyres that are on, I'm running in all conditions now, dry and wet, pretty good. They are Metzler Cruise Techs, they've done 13,000 Ks um, and I reckon they're about halfway through their life so obviously the front will get more than the back but I reckon they're good for 20 odd thousand Ks and I'm pretty happy with them. Um, they grip okay in the wet um, and they're great in the dry. This bike's got a lot of punch and a lot of torque off the line so when it's cold in the morning you are able to light up the back tyre if you give it a gutful, but I guess you can do that on many bikes. So, comment one. Really happy with the tyres on this bike. They come as standard. Some really tough cars in front of me. There's a HQ, well not 71 HQ Holden wagon in front of me. It's obviously put a 350 in it. But in front of that, I hope I can get pictures further up, there's a XAGT Falcon, uh, that's a 70 as well. Um, I can see a uh, E-Type Jag, I can see an SLR 5000 and a tough one at that Tirana. So we'll see if I can get up to these blokes a bit later. So we picked up all the lads at Lands, where there's six of us riding now. All the old crews back together. We're riding, Phil's leading us through the Malula Valley, very pretty through here. We even get onto better roads up the up the hill a bit. Um, comment on the Indian, there's three riding modes on this bike. There's rain, touring and sports. Frankly, I'm not sure why you'd muck around with the other two. I just permanently leave it in sports. That way you're used to the one mode all the way. Why you didn't leave it in those other modes, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, sure, the rain's self-evident, but um, uh, so this bike's constantly left in uh, sports mode. We're going to turn on here to this little back road we've been on many times before. This is a beautiful, twisty bit of road, this one. It's 
called Old Gimpy Road. Need to be careful, we've had a lot of rain through here and the roads are shit. There's holes and fucking shit everywhere. This is Gold Creek Road in the Sunshine Coast Tinderlands. Nice bit of biking road this. Off. We're in between, we're right on the top of the range on the hinterlands uh, in between Flaxton. We'll head through Montville, it'll be full of tourists, and then Mullaney, and we'll probably stop for a coffee or lunch at Mullaney. Beautiful and green and lush out here, and you can't see it on the camera, but I look out to the left and I see the coast, the Pacific Ocean out there on the Sunshine Coast. It's glorious up through here, but it's really friggin' busy on a weekend. Another comment on the Indian. Uh, you should be aware that this thing is speed limited to 110 miles an hour, 178 kilometres an hour. Trust me, it really is 178 kilometres an hour. That's where the electronic limiter comes in. Not a big deal, I guess, for most places in Australia, given, you know, we're limited to 110. 100, 110 kilometres an hour um, unless you're naughty like we occasionally are the bike is geared quite low um, and that gives the bike heaps of punch frankly so at 100 kilometres an hour, 60 miles an hour you want to overtake your car you don't bother shifting down a gear out of 6 to 5th you just nail it and bang you're past it it's really nice to overtake on the only annoyance would be to guys that want to do more than 178 kilometres an hour, more than 110 miles an hour, but that's a personal thing, I guess. <laughs> so we've stopped in Mullaney for lunch, uh, made a mess of things. Well, we're heading out of Mullaney, heading towards Woodfin, across the top of the range, the Angular Range. Beautiful through here. Need to be careful on a weekend because of the coppers. Um, more comments about the Indian. This is important to some people and not so important to others, the cost of servicing. Like the Harley, every 8,000 kilometres is your normal servicing, 5,000 miles. Um, many suggest you do it earlier than that, but I don't know if that's necessary running synthetic oils. Uh, the cost is different though. Um, on a Harley these days, you've got to pay the Harley tax and be extorted and bent over and get rooted, of course. Um, so the cost of a normal 8,000k full service on a Harley, including um, all three oils, primary gearbox and engine, is just under 500 bucks now in Brisbane. Whereas the Indian, which runs all the same oil, so runs uh, combined oil for engine, gearbox, primary, etc., etc., the 8,000 kilometre service cost comes in at about 400 bucks. Um, so about a hundred dollars a service difference. How much is that in the oil? I'm not quite sure. As I said, important to some, not so important to others. But there you go, there's another difference between the two. We're just coming down the range now. It's a beautiful bit of road through here. I think I've said so many times. We are rolling into Mount Me. Just glorious up here. Beautiful mountain road to ride. Cool. Oh, police with a camera. Bastards. There's a camera right there.
I've passed four cameras today. Australia says they're reduced to reduce their deaths on the road, but we all know it's just to raise revenue. This is the most interesting bit of road we've got left when we get down the bottom to Dabra. That's the end of the good stuff. Scenic ride back into Brisbane, but in terms of the Indian, I hope my comments have helped just a little bit. It's the finest stuff that you don't find out till after you buy the bike. I'm still loving it, but as I always say, the test will be with time and see how this bike goes with you know, 80 or 100,000 k's on it. I'll certainly keep you posted. And please remember, live life today.